Okay, so here we are looking at the schematic for the Drake 2C. I'm going to go ahead and full screen this so we can see it a little bit better. Um, so we want to start from everything that's coming through the air, DC to daylight, as they say. All frequencies are coming to that antenna. Now, if the antenna has a better, um, it's more tuned, it's more resonant to a certain frequency, uh, then those signals will be stronger being picked up by the antenna. However, every frequency is coming into this radio. And that is one of the most important things about receivers is the selectivity. And really the what we're doing here, um, trying to get a radio signal um, from out in the ether to going into um, a radio and coming through and getting out to the speaker is selecting only what we want. Um, and that's the frequency that you're trying to listen to. Um, and that's a lot of a lot of frequencies out there. So it takes sometimes several stages um, in order to reproduce that signal um, accurately and uh, sufficiently for you to be able to hear it. So let's just uh, take a look at the the schematic here. I'll go ahead and zoom in. You'll notice right right here is our antenna connector. Um, that's where every signal is coming in. All the RF is coming in right there. Um, and that's what we're starting with. We're starting with a big wide frequency range of signals that are coming into this thing. And through all this circuitry, we're going to get what we want. So um, through most of this, let's take into account that we have, uh, let's say we're looking for a 7.2 megahertz signal. Um, and just for simplicity's sake, initially we're just looking for a 7.2 megahertz AM signal. So our signal is going to come in through the antenna jack, which is jack one right here, J1 antenna. And it's coupled to our input, our front end of our radio, through this transformer. This is the input transformer for the antenna, the RF amplifier uh, transformer. It's coupled to the RF amplifier, which is pretty much this whole section right here. I'm kind of drawing it out with the cursor here. This is pretty much our entire RF amplifier section. Um, in order to start getting some selectivity and to prevent us from just amplifying every signal that we get in through the antenna, we need to tune this circuit. So what we're going to do is, is that once we come through the transformer right in here, we're going to either add some inductance, these are inductors, this is our band switch right here. It's going to be putting in different inductances or capacitances depending on which uh, band we want to try and, and, and receive. So combined with these capacitors and inductors depending on which ones are in and the capacitance that's provided by this variable inductor and this variable inductor. We also have resistor or uh, inductors over here and some capacitance. So we have capacitance and inductance on the input side of the tube, capacitance and inductance on the output side of the tube. This is our RF amplifier tube right here. In this radio, it's a 6BZ6 uh, amplifier. Some of the older Drake 2Cs, early runs, had a 12BZ uh, Bravo Zulu, 12 Bravo Zulu 6 um, RF amplifier right here. The only difference between this tube and the ones in the older ones is the filament voltage. In this case, being a 6BZ6, it is a 6 volt filament voltage versus a 12BZ6, which had a 12 volt filament. So between these inductors capacitance and the inducti fixed inductance capacitance here, we vary our capacitance using the pre-selector. That's the pre-selector knob. 
to tune this RF amplifier to resonate within a certain frequency band. Um, like I said, we're just narrowing down selectivity um, as we go through stages. And I want to point out that once we start going through this and we're looking at some of the frequencies going through the radio, I want you to keep in mind it is not just exactly that frequency that's coming through. There's a, 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 a passband, so to speak, uh, of frequencies that are going through. Um, so when I start mentioning different frequencies, that frequency is coming through and a little bit above and a little bit below. And that is important, especially with sideband. So once we come through, um, we get to the RS stage, like I said, we tune our, our RF amplifier to resonance at a particular uh, band width. Um, and that's, we, we tweak that with using the pre-selector. That's a ganged variable capacitor. These two capacitors right here are both together um, run by the same shaft, which happens to be the, uh, the uh, pre-selector um, knob and as you can see there are different spots depending on which band you're in um, here and here here and here um, depending on what inductions you have to, to make that resonance right there um, so basically you're you're tuning this with two knobs um, real rough course would be the band selection and then a little finer selectivity as far as resonance to the RF amplifier comes from really tweaking that resonance with the pre-selector and uh, capacitors. So once we come, we get to the RF amplifier stage, uh, our signal's coming in right here. As you can see, it goes through the transformer. It's got some, uh, some filtering right here, basically, um, to help make it resonant. The signal comes through, and once again, we still got a lot of frequencies coming through here. Comes over here uh, to the grid on the, the RF amplifier, and output is on the plate here. So it comes up, comes out here. Once again, this is helping tune the resonance, resonance of the uh, RF amplifier stage, and comes around to this transformer right here. This transformer is coupling our signal to our next stage. This is going to be our first mixer. The 12AU6 tube is going to be our first mixer. Now, what is it mixing? It's mixing two signals. It's mixing the signals that we're coming are coming in from our RF amplifier, which we've kind of narrowed our selectivity down a little bit due to the fact that we have a tuned resonance on our RF amplifier. But it's also pulling a signal. If you see right here, there's kind of a, uh, a darker color right here that's coming from our crystal oscillator, or local oscillator. Let's just call it a local oscillator, crystal oscillator. Um, that's either going to send an 11 megahertz, 18 megahertz, or 25 megahertz signal, depending on which um, one is put in line and mind you that is also connected to the band switch so as you change bands depending on which crystal it needs it selects the appropriate one in order to produce the pro appropriate crystal local oscillator frequency so output from the crystal oscillator comes through this line here and is fed on the same line through the transformer with the incoming signal to the first mixer So, once you start mixing signals, you end up with two products. Um, you're either, when, when you mix signals, you, they either add together or they subtract. So those two frequencies that come out of the, uh, the two signals is matching. So in this case, um, we're using 2.5, or uh, correction, uh, 7.2 megahertz. So we got 7.2 is what we're goal is and we're mixing that with 
our, in this case, 11 megahertz crystal oscillator. So if you do the math on that, we can either add them together and we get 18.2 uh, megahertz. Or we can also, they also subtract from each other and it'll produce a frequency of 3.8 megahertz. Now this radio is designed and most receivers typically change the signal and convert it down. The reason for that is, is we're trying to go for a frequency that is easier, easier to filter and is easier to amplify. And especially in older radios like this, with the technology they had, lower frequencies are easier to filter and easier to amplify due to the technology. Um, higher frequencies, you don't have as much efficiency through amplifiers. You don't have um, uh, as good of filtering through uh, filters. Um, basically because by the time size gets involved as well filters start getting a little bit bigger they change different values it's easier to filter and to amplify a smaller signal so we're going to down convert our frequencies trying to get them to a point where we can amplify them because remember what's coming in from the antenna is minuscule we're talking micro volts of uh, energy that's coming in to the antenna so we're trying to build that up we've already done some through the RF amplifier but now we need to start getting and we need to start selecting the frequency that we want so we're in our first mixer and we're going to produce a frequency that is going to be from uh, in this case what we want to do is is end up with a frequency that's going to be somewhere um, down from our original frequency. Um, so in this case we use the local oscillator and we mix it with that 11 megahertz that gives us a 3.8 megahertz signal. Uh, I'm also going to point out at this stage if you come over here and look if you look at the band selector this is the band selector you can follow these dotted lines this control which is on the front of the radio controls this this and this, and I believe there's actually another one somewhere, um, all at the same time. They're ganged together. Um, this one is in front of this one, which is in front of this one, with a shaft going through all three. So it switches all of them. So if you look at this, right now it's in the 3.5 megahertz. If you look at our crystals here, if you look at the way this is hooked up, it, none of our crystals are in line. The reason for that is because 3.5 to 4 megahertz is already low enough. Um, so they don't mix it with a signal on the 3.5 megahertz. So we're doing 7.2 because that's where we really need to start playing with everything and mixing things together. So we've got 3.8 coming out right here. Um, it comes out of there at the plate right here and goes up through this next transformer. That couples the output to the second mixer. Now T3 which is right here is also tuned. If you look at frequencies that can go through here before we move to the second, uh, uh, second converter I want to I wanna cover this real quick. If you'll see here, we got 11, 18, and 25, and depending on what band you're in, selects which crystal you're using. So, we want to make sure that we're going to have a frequency that we can mix in the next stage that's going to work right. Which is going to be approximately, uh, it's going to be about 3.5 to 4 megahertz. So, say we take um, 14 megahertz. Uh, the bottom end of the 20 meter band is 14 megahertz. We can mix that with, and let's just see here. Uh, if we move one that way, 
we start mixing then. So when we get to our higher bands, we go to a higher uh, crystal oscillator that's still going to give us about 3.5 to 4 megahertz as we mix out of here. This transformer here is coupling to here, but it's also helping to filter out anything that's not in that 3.5 to 4 megahertz. So that we can continue having um, more selectivity. Uh, we're getting rid of a little bit more stuff we don't want. So we've gotten rid of a little bit here. We've gotten rid of a little bit more here. So we're more just focusing on 3.5 to 4 megahertz coming through. Here, this is our second mixer, the 12BE6. It's a mixer and VFO. So we're mixing two signals. Again, we got our input signal. In this case, since we're using 7.2 megahertz, we have a 3.8 megahertz signal that's coming into uh, pin 7. That's also going to be mixed with our VFO signal. Now the VFO signal has a frequency of range of 3.955 megahertz to 4.555 megahertz. When we mix our incoming with our outgoing we're wanting to produce a frequency that is going to produce our next intermediate frequency. And this is a set intermediate frequency. T4, which is on the output of the second converter, really only wants to pass 455 kilohertz. So we need to mix a signal with our 3.8 that's going to produce 455 kilohertz once they're mixed. So this is producing a variable frequency, i.e. VFO, variable frequency oscillator. It's an oscillator that can change frequency. Um, between our ganged uh, ca capacitors, and we do have a set one here to help fine tune this so it rolls uh, in accordance with uh, some other stages of the radio which come later. Um, we want to mix this with our 3.8 coming in. Now in this case you can mix, like I said, anytime you mix a signal you get two, two results. Um, but really we're just trying to find one that's going to give us 455 megahertz. So if the VFO produces a frequency of 4.255 megahertz, which is produced in this purple area right here. It will mix with our 3.8 and produce a 455 kilohertz signal out the plate. Now, it's also going to produce a, a frequency that's higher than that, but we don't really care about that. I mean, what would that be? Uh, 5.055 megahertz? Well, this is going to kind of help keep that from going through. So only the 455 comes out. It's coupled through this, tran this transformer here. As, as you can see, there's no physical electrical contact between the plate and our next stage. Um, even we have capacitors right here that are blocking a direct conductivity through there. So it's coupled through this transformer. So after we get done producing this and, it, and you know just just think about this for a moment because we're, we're getting really specific with our 3.8 or 7.2 or 455. Like I mentioned 455 needs to come through here. That's the only thing that's going to work with our next stage. So say we had um, a 3.9 megahertz signal, which would be a, a 7.1 megahertz input, by the way. Um, if we had 3.9 coming up here, then we would have 4.355 megahertz in our VFO. 
So we change our frequency in our VFO in order to mix with what signals coming in here in order to produce the 455 kilohertz. Okay, so we've got 455 kilohertz coming out of our second mixer coupled through the transformer T4 to come to the next stage. And this is our third mixer. Remember I had mentioned before in a previous video the Drake 2C is a triple conversion receiver. We've got our first conversion, we've just went through our second conversion, and now we're going to our third conversion. At this point we're taking our 455 kilohertz signal and we're going to mix it to an even lower frequency. Now this frequency coming in here does not vary. It's always 455 kilohertz but like I mentioned before there's a little bit more coming through there as well. Um, 455 is the center of what's passing through there. Um, you cannot convey information if you only have the one signal for especially sideband. <clears throat> so our 455 is coming into our third converter or third mixer but this also has an oscillator built into it which you can kind of see part of it in this brown. If we follow this brown down it also goes down to another portion um, here that helps to produce uh, we're actually going to produce two different frequencies here depending on what we're wanting to uh, as our result. So 455 is coming out. This oscillator is depending on our switch position and this is the mode switch down here. Um, you can see it right here. Dotted line depending on which mode we're in. So in AM um, and lower sideband it appears that we are using our 405 kilohertz oscillator. This oscillator will produce either 405 or 505 kilohertz. Um, for AM, let's just stick with AM for right now. Um, it looks like it's doing 405 kilohertz. So our 455 comes in here and mixes with, in this case, our 405 kilohertz signal. Well, do simple math right there. We're looking for a smaller one, so let's subtract the two. 455 minus 405 gives us 50 kilohertz. Now, the 505 it uses in the upper sideband because we want to, it's still going to produce a 50 kilohertz. Uh, IF, intermediate frequency, um, but we do need it to be in the upper sideband. We also need it to be the higher one so that we, when we do our subtraction, um, depending on the sideband signal that's coming through, um, we'll still have our information. Um, once we get to here, we've done 455 and mixed it with the 500, in this case 405, because we're going to do an AM. It's going to give us a 50 kilohertz signal coming out. Coming out of the plate here we go through our passband selector and if you remember on the front of the radio we had a passband switch that had a 4.8 kilohertz, 2.4 kilohertz or 0.4 kilohertz selectivity um, as far as passband. Um, so that's going to let, uh, like I mentioned before, it's not just the frequency, the 455 in the previous section, or it's not just the 50 kilohertz that's coming out of uh, the plate, pin 5, on our third mixer. There's a little bit of a bandwidth there. It's probably, um, I don't know, 10 kilohertz, 15 kilohertz, I'm not really sure. It could be 20 kilohertz. But this is going to tune it so it does a pass band. In the 4.8 kilohertz selection, it has very steep skirts, if you looked at the graph. Um, centered on 50 kilohertz, 
it's going to have um, above that and below that um, 2.4 kilohertz on the 4.8 kilohertz band uh, band pass. The 2.4 obviously would kind of go um, a little bit well. It's probably 4.8 above. <clears throat> but it trims it down a little bit. It helps get rid of um, some of all the other frequencies that are still trying to roll through the, the mixer and they're producing um, frequencies above and below our IFs. Once we come out of our third converter, third mixer, like I said, we go through the pass band selector for whichever band, pass band you have. Um, it's selected by you know placing different capacitances and inductance in line with this in order to create uh, that that pass band. And let's keep following the green here. We go through our pass band and it comes out. Um, it's got a little coupling capacitor right here. And let's go ahead and follow this down. This right here is our IF amp. Um, it basically goes to uh, the meter and goes down here to our ABC right in here but our signal that we want is now has a 50 kilohertz um, IF intermediate frequency so basically we've gone just to give you a little run through we've gone through DC to daylight coming in here we've gone through our amplifier which was tuned to be close to resonance on the frequency that we want We've mixed it with our local oscillator to produce a 3.5 to 4 kil or 4 megahertz signal. So we stepped it down a little bit. Like I said, 75 meters, 80 meters doesn't even mix. It's already in that ba that bandwidth. So we've mixed it down to 3.5 to 4, and that works for any of the bands. You just change which crystal you need in order to make sure that you got 3.5 to 4. We come to our second mixer and we mix it with the VFO frequency in order to produce an even lower frequency, 455 kilohertz now. We come to our third converter or mixer, which also has an oscillator, which mixes with that. Now we've got a 50 kilohertz signal going through here, which mind you, the whole time it's going through here, it still has its modulation attached to it. Coming down here, we're now going to move to making that 50 kilohertz signal something we can hear. So let's follow this down, follow this down, follow this down. AM detector. The Drake 2C uses a diode detector which is right here. Uh, then we have what looks like just a, a little bit of uh, possibly some little bit of amplification right here um, after we get our product detection um, which probably only passes audio frequencies via 3M3094 30, 30, um, which comes over to our mode switch which in this case is sitting in AM and you can see that these two are connected in AM it goes through here comes out comes up here and goes to our audio gain now I want to I want to stop right here for just a moment and I'm going to show you something that I want to uh, I want to prepare as far as how is this diode detector getting a 50 kilohertz signal way above hearing range and turning it extracting something that we can hear out of it in this AM signal so let me uh, let me get set up real quick here um, and change the camera let me uh, let me go ahead and get changed out on my camera here to something we can actually see so we're going to look at the oscilloscope here and take a look at what's going on now I've got my signal generator set up to 50 kilohertz um, I'm also I have a modulation of 1000 Hertz so 
this would be like somebody sitting um, at their transmitter and they're on 50 kilohertz um, and they're they can whistle really good and they have a perfect 1000 hertz tone that they're whistling into the microphone in this case they're sitting there their transmitters on 7.2 using the example that we've gone through on this circuit um, so they're whistling at a thousand Hertz that 7.2 megahertz signal obviously is picked up by the the antenna the uh, the pre selector and the band switch has tuned the RF amplifier to approximately 7 to 7.5 megahertz um, so it's really passing that and it's really amplifying those signals still got that thousand Hertz modulation on it It goes through the first pro first mixer it's mixed with the local oscillator we get a 3.8 megahertz signal out of that tube out of the first stage that's going to the second stage it's still got that thousand Hertz modulation on it we get to our second or our, uh, um, second converter mixer um, and we produce a 455 kilohertz signal that still has that thousand Hertz modulation on it we get to our third mixer it's now converted it to a 50 kilohertz signal we're starting to get into range that it's easier to filter and easier to amplify things we've brought it down to 50 kilohertz but it's still got that thousand Hertz modulation on it so at this point Let's take a look at what a 50 kilohertz signal would look like. So I've got my signal generator sitting on 50 kilohertz. Um, I got, uh, I'm just using about 13 and a half volts peak to peak, just so we can see it on the oscilloscope. And there is our unmodulated 50 kilohertz signal. But we have a thousand Hertz on it, which is going to make our 50 kilohertz look like that. And you can see in the, in the signal, we still got our 50 kilohertz in there, but it's modulating it a thousand times per second. That's what this uh, less frequent wave is, lower frequency wave is. And you can see inside of there let me see if I can get just a little bit uh, a little bit closer in on that let me adjust the trigger so we can see what we're doing here you can see we still have our 50 kilohertz in there it's just changing the amplitude of it so once we get to the AM detector we need to get rid of all that we, we we can't hear that anyhow it's 50 kilohertz the human hearing doesn't go that high and the audio amplifier can't pass that anyhow so at that point in time that's just something that we're carrying our thousand Hertz on that's where you get carrier when on an AM carrier that's just the carrier wave that's what we're using to modulate it in order to have something to represent that thousand Hertz on now, if we were to take this and just simply feed it to an audio amplifier, we wouldn't get anything out. Reason being is because an audio amplifier is going to take a voltage and it's either going to make it bigger or smaller. Amplifier, we're hoping it's gonna make it bigger. So it needs to have a change in voltage. The problem is with AM, when we modulate our signal it goes big and small mind you yes the sig the 50 kilohertz is going positive negative positive negative positive negative positive negative but the audio amplifier cannot follow that as far as it's concerned at the range in which it can work there's a positive voltage and there is a negative voltage let me see if I can get this centered a little bit better and you'll see that it's perfectly equal. We go positive just as much as we go negative. Well, if you take 
plus, in this case, uh, it would be, uh, let's see, 6.5, 6 6.85 volts positive and 6.85 volts negative. That's equal zero. So what would be going to our audio amplifier in the frequency range that it can handle is zero volts. That's constantly zero volts. It's zero volts at this point. It's zero volts effective at this point. It's zero volts effective at that point. It's not going to amplify anything. So we need an AM detector. So what they do is, is they put a diode in line. That's going to take approximately half of our signal, either the positive or the negative, and get rid of it. In this case, we're going to try and get rid of the negative side of it. So bear with me, a little bit of jittering and stuff probably going on on the oscilloscope here in a minute, and I'll have to re-trigger it probably, but I'm going to put a diode in line between my signal generator and the oscilloscope. So we can basically pretend like we have an AM detector. And in fact, it is an AM detector. Um, the only difference is, is that this diode I'm going to be used, which is a switching diode, so it's a fairly high frequency switching, um, but it is silicon. So silicon diodes do have a larger voltage drop than uh, what's in this radio, which would be a germanium diode. So we're going to lose some of our, our, uh, our amplitude. But let me go ahead and switch that so that now we're going through a diode. Let me see if I can get this to trigger. Now you probably can't see, well you can in the screen, see better than I. So here's our zero line right here. If you'll notice, and, and, and pay attention to, to like our, our gap here. So we got from like this line to this line is one wavelength. Let me go back to unrect or un back to our original line here. So my note that we have the same this is our one wavelength of our 1,000 hertz. But we have positive and negative there. Now we only have the positive portion and just the 1,000 hertz. There's a little bit of that 50 kilohertz still in there. But it's not, it's not switching fast enough on my diode in order to get a full deal there. Which is fine because this is all we need. We don't need the 50 kilohertz. When we're trying to hear it, we don't need the 7.2 megahertz that was originally sent. We don't need the 3.8 that came out of the first converter. We don't need the 455 that came out of the second mixer. We don't need the 50 kilohertz that came out of the third mixer. We just need the 1,000 hertz. In this case, that's all the information we need. That's what we want to amplify. So let me go back back to this screen whoops we'll go back to this screen and we'll take a look at this a little bit closer again so now and detector this diode that one sole diode right there is the only thing that's making our AM signal detectable that's it. it. All it takes is one diode. Um, if anybody has ever built an old, uh, maybe got a Radio Shack kit, or um, I mean, even before Radio Shack, they went and and they made crystal radios. Um, that all they they didn't even have a battery in them. They didn't need a battery in them. They had a coil of wire, a long antenna, a ground, and a diode. That's all they were doing. You can take the 7.2 megahertz and put it, and if you could amplify it enough, get enough gain off of it, you could put just a diode in line with it between it and ground with some headphones in, in between, and you could still get the same AM signal off of it, but it'd be extremely, extremely weak. It wouldn't be amplified. It's hard to amplify that signal. 
to something that you can drive with an amplifier. So in this case, now what we have coming out of this diode is that signal. Coming out of there and then it goes over. This is actually the volume control on the front radio. This audio gain right here, this potentiometer is literally the potentiometer that's hooked to the AF gain knob or the volume control knob. So it's fed through here and then comes in here, runs through some pre-drivers to our final audio output driver or uh, amplifier, which then it goes through the, a transformer in order to go to either the speaker or the headphones. All it's doing is taking in our, in our example, a thousand hertz tone, which is very small still, and it makes it loud enough that we can hear it through phones and speakers. And the only reason this transformer right here is here is in order to make sure that the impedance output of the audio transformer matches something that you can use for phones. In our case, um, or speaker, in our case, which is a four ohm output because of the, the ratio of turns from the primary to the secondary here, they set it up for a four ohm output. So it looks to me, if this is accurate right here, that the impedance, uh, the output audio amplifier, final uh, audio amplifier, is expecting a higher impedance than four ohms. Um, but mind you, this varies a lot with frequency. So this, this four ohms is nominal. Um, you'll probably sometimes see on the back of a speaker, it'll say like four ohms, eight ohms, nominal. That's because with frequency and the efficiencies of this transformer, um, it's around four ohms. Um, it makes it happy. So that gets us our AM. But what if we had a single sideband signal that's coming through here? Let's go with, uh, well, we're doing 7.2 megahertz. So let's do the... Uh, Let's do the uh, uh, lower sideband. So, um, 1,000 hertz. So, we don't have a carrier. Remember that, sideband, we don't have a carrier. All we have is the 1,000 hertz tone that's going through, and of course, mind you, it, it, when you're actually speaking in sideband, the frequency is varying, the amplitude is varying. Um, so picture sideband signal as a varying sig frequency signal um, within audio frequency bandwidth. So say uh, typically 2.8 kilohertz um, would be the sideband. Um, so if I'm doing a thousand hertz tone in lower sideband, uh, mind you, when I, when I first produce an AM signal, I have two sidebands. So we're just going to take the lower one. If I'm doing 1000 hertz, and I'm at 7.200 megahertz, and I do not have my carrier, I've suppressed my carrier, and I have a constant tone of 1000 hertz, then what my radio is actually transmitting is a 7.199 megahertz signal at the 1000 hertz constant tone. My voice, that radio, that signal is coming out of my radio since I've suppressed the character carrier is going to vary. It could be 7.196 Seven, it could be one point uh, or seven point one nine eight three. <laughs> Depends on what tone is coming out of my voice into the microphone. 
but let's just make it simple. We're going to go with our 1,000 hertz. So we got 71.99 coming through now. Um, our radio is still tuning that the 7.2. So when we go through our stages, we're going through here with that 7.2 is what we're, what we're aiming for. But I mentioned before, it's not just the 455, or I'm sorry, let's start at the first stage. It's not just the 3.8 that's going through there. There's a little bandwidth to it. It's not, on the second one, it's not just the 455 kilohertz that's coming through there. It's got a little range each side of it. So we get to our third mixer, and remember this is where we had the 405 and the 505 uh, kilohertz oscillators. So we're in a lower sideband. It's going to use the uh, 405 uh, kilohertz oscillator, and we're going to mix that with our signal. So by the time it gets to here, our 7.199 signal with our radios tuned to 7.2 is going to produce a 454 kilohertz tone or signal um, past the second converter because we're a thousand kilohertz low of 455 because remember it's still in there that thousand hertz tone is actually making a 454 kilohertz signal that's riding through this thing because we still have that mixing. We get to our next one, we get to the 405. Well, 454 minus 405 is 49 kilohertz. Okay. Because remember, we were trying, uh, we have that 50 kilohertz difference on an AM signal with just a true on frequency carrier. Um, so, I'm trying to figure out the best way to explain this because there's two different ways I can explain this. Um, let's just go with that. Let, let, let me back up a moment. Make this a little bit easier to understand because you're probably thinking, well, if we're at 7.5, then why do we got 454? The math don't add up. Okay, so on sideband, we don't need to worry about the carrier. Let's just forget about the carrier. Forget I said anything about the 7.2. Our frequency in that instant, because remember, if your voice is constantly changing, so it's constantly going to be changing, but let's just go with something that we can know and it's set and it's constant and we'll work with that. <clears throat> when we go through here with the 7.199 megahertz signal that my radio is literally transmitting and we go through here and we run through everything first off in order to pick up that signal and the radio be dead on frequency for the signal it's getting not what the transmitter guy's display says it would be 7.199 so our 3.8 is now 3.799 we mix that of course the VFO would have to be slightly different wouldn't it because we still want 455 coming out of there this is why you have to tune just a little off frequency um, and at 7.2 it would work that's going through there and it's still going to have that 455 but we're not going to have we're not going to be able to detect it so we're going to be off frequency so we're going to be we're still going to go with what our display says 7.2 well that's going to give us if our vfo is at 7.2 megahertz i know this sounds confusing um i'm trying to I'm trying to do the easiest way to explain this to make it in uh, the best way um if you have no idea how this works uh, 
by the time we get to 7.2 and we're we're tuning to 7.2 like i said you get to you'll have a 454 kilohertz tone making it to the third mixer which is going to mix with the 400 or the 405 which is a 49 kilohertz tone well it still follows the same path it comes down here But when we go to sideband, it doesn't just connect these two together to go to the audio stage. So it can't get through here. It can't get through the AM detector. So it goes over here, which basically this kind of does uh, rough, roughly the same thing. But right here is our BFO. Remember, this is right about 50 kilohertz coming through here. This BFO is dead on 50 kilohertz. And it's going to mix with our, in this case, 49 megahertz signal that's coming through here with that 50, which is going to be either, either 99, which doesn't work, the audio amplifier couldn't pass that anyhow, or it's going to give us 1 kilohertz. Remember, we were using 1 kilohertz to begin with. That second beating uh, with the BFO produces a 1 kilohertz signal as well as well as the 50 still going through there and it's still got the uh it, it now have the 99 kilohertz but the problem is they cannot pass through the filtering and the audio amplifier can't produce it anyhow so once we get our bfo i i'm probably confusing the hell out of all y'all um but we mix the 50 kilohertz in with here and we're still going to have the one kilohertz left plus the other two, but one kilohertz is the only one that, that the audio amplifier can handle. So it comes, it mixes here and comes in here. Of course, this would be switched over further, which is going to connect this pin to this pin. See, if I rotate this, it rotates this, it's gonna connect this pin and this pin, which once again, gets us over to the audio amplifier. But the only thing left is the 1,000 hertz. The hardest part about describing this, I guess, is the fact that we're just, we're doing it as a 1,000 hertz. Which is, if it's constant, it might as well be just a constant carrier, a constant wave, continuous wave. Um, which. Once again, that's how CW works because it's just putting out a tone. There's no modulation to it. The best way to describe single sideband would be a constantly, instantaneously variable wave that varies according to the frequency of the original modulation, your voice, and the amplitude of it. And that's all the amplifier, the audio amplifier needs is if your voice goes up, it's going to have a stronger signal right there. So it's going to have a, more to work with on the amplifier. And whatever the instantaneous frequency of your voice or whatever you're transmitting on single sideband go, uh, comes through there is going to be reproduced as that frequency on the output. Um, I'm trying to figure, I, I, I'm not sure I'm, necessarily explaining the sideband side quite right um, but like I said your your radio with a thousand Hertz tone and lower sideband literally is putting out a constant wave of 7.199 because it's a constant 1000 Hertz tone um, if it's 1000 Hertz and then the next instant it's 500 then that frequency changes because it's that sideband is produced by the result of the original carrier frequency which is in the radio but suppressed and whatever tone is also mixed in with that because of the amplitude um when you do look at this maybe this is this this might be a better way to uh to kind of show you this let me go back to this. 
so we have our original frequency, which you can see right there. I just zoomed in basically. That up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. In fact, I can go even deeper than that. Oh, wow, that, that lost some triggering. So there's our original, say, 7.2 megahertz. Being modulated, in this case, by 1,000 hertz. Well, it's hard to tell here, but there's technically two different frequencies that you could get a result out of this if I were trying to measure these frequencies. Actually, there's three. There's the original frequency, let's just say this is 7.2 megahertz. But since I'm modulating it at 1000 hertz, we have another wave produced here, which is going to produce a 7.201 megahertz because we add the 1000 hertz and the 7.2 megahertz. Remember, it also subtracts. So we also have 7.2 199 megahertz. That's the lower sideband. That's the sideband that's below the carrier frequency. When you do sideband, AM produces two sidebands, period. It's got the higher frequency in there, it's got the lower frequency in there. Well, you don't need both because you only need the thousand hertz conveyed one way or the other. That's why upper sideband is more efficient because we don't worry about sending the carrier. We don't worry about sending the minus if you're in upper sideband or the higher frequency if you're in lower sideband. We just send that tone, that instantaneous tone. So, in this case, we were talking about lower sideband. I take my signal here and I sub take the the difference between the two and it gives me the 7.199. If I were to tune literally my radio in sideband on a thousand hertz tone lower sideband, if I were to tune this receiver to 7.1999 or 7.199, I wouldn't hear anything because it would give me the 455 kilohertz IF for my tone at the end of the second converter, which would go into the third mixer or converter, whatever you want to call it, which would give me just a 50 kilohertz signal. Well, there's no modulation to that. It's beating with the 50 kilohertz BFO and giving me zero and 100. 100 don't pass the audio amp, zero is nothing. So that's why in order to pick that signal up, I'm actually at 7.2. So basically you can look at it, if you're in sideband, your radio rarely, if ever, and it'd be an extremely low frequency modulation, does not transmit on the frequency that you have it set at. That's just your base that you're either gonna add to or subtract from, either add to to make upper sideband or subtract from is going to be your lower sideband depending on what the instantaneous frequency is at that instant. So that's a, a little bit easier I guess maybe to kind of understand um, what I'm referencing here. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping that makes sense. Um, maybe I need to make a video that's just for sideband instead of trying to skim over it. Um, but basically I'm hoping through all of that you guys um, got the drift of RF coming in here and everything's coming in here and we just keep selecting down. Down converting and selecting down and increasing our selectivity making it narrower and narrower and narrower till we get to the point where we can get rid of the RF frequencies and only have the audio frequencies to amplify and send out the speaker. I hope everybody uh, enjoyed that explanation. Um, I'm not sure if I explained it 
uh, quite the best way. Um, but I hope it at least helps you understand how this radio um, does work. Uh, and the fact that, uh, especially in this area of the radio, right here, we can take a relatively small VFO range. Um, what was in this case? 39.55 to 45.55, I believe. And tune in every frequency in the 3.5, 7, 14, 21, and 28.5 megahertz bands using just a less than uh, about one megahertz um, frequency range in our VFO um, and make it selective all the way kind of from the beginning um, with our pre selector. So um, I'm going to. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and, I guess, kind of wrap this up right here. And uh, I'll leave you with a little bit more of listening to the Drake 2C for a few seconds uh, before before the video ends. Um, so try to enjoy the, the sound coming out of it. It's operational again. Um, I like the looks of it before, but I like the operation and the looks of it now. And I'm glad it's uh, it's back to life. I've had it for a number of years and never heard a signal out of it until uh, until this project. So uh, until next time, bye for now.